Hello, folks. Welcome to the UK Games Expo live stream. It's me, Millie. Um, this week, I, I don't have my faithful, faithful companion, Kate. She is away this week. But don't fear, I've got Nick with us. Nick from Ludorati. How are you doing, Nick? Uh, hi, Millie. Yes, very good. Thank you. Yeah. In the sunshine. Is it sunny where you are? Where are you right now? Where are you? Uh, in Lincolnshire, uh, my home address. So. Nice. So it's, it's, it's quite good here at the moment. Nice. Yeah, it was very sunny here yesterday in, in the north, but then today it's a little cloudy and a little... Oh, yeah. Bleh. Yeah, yeah. We're forecasting... How British is this conversation? We're like we're talking about the weather immediately, <laughs> straight in there. Like, oh no, we're forecasting some good weather. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Oh, it's very sunny over yeah. here. Gosh. Yeah. You can take the take the Brit onto the internet, but you can't you can't take the Brit out of the or something. I don't know. I, don't I know, know what you're getting at, Millie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so we're here to chat a little bit about um, yourself and um, Luderati um, for folks who aren't clued up because obviously um, we were going to chat last week and I, and I was ready for everything then and then we had some technical googas do do googas. So, so let everybody else know. Um, tell us a little bit about Ludorati, and then we'll find out a little bit more about you in a minute. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, yeah, Ludorati has been around now for just over five years. So um, it was it was our anniversary uh, this month uh, that we couldn't oh. quite celebrate it, uh, still being uh, shut, of course, with regards to the restrictions. Um, but it um, basically we opened up as a, a cafe bar, board game cafe bar. But we've really position ourselves as an entertainment venue now in terms of what we do with the way in which we have board games, role play games, uh, our own version of escape room, which is escape drone um, and other things that we do. We, we, it is quite a, uh, a nexus, a city hub of, of things. And, and well, when, when we're back open, we'd like to think that we continue where we left off, which was we were seeing a lot of membership growth and we were doing quite a few things technically as well, uh, technologically, which we were hoping to be the first of doing a a few things for the industry, uh, which we'll probably um, hit on shortly. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that's really where we're at at the moment. Uh, we're still shot, but we're looking to be open very, very soon. <clears throat> and and so a cafe bar, you've got all the like the, the kind of, I guess what's becoming a, a traditional kind of idea in if not each person kind of executes them slightly differently because different markets and yes. that kind of stuff but wonderful games library lots of lovely folks who will help you out tasty food good beers. yeah so, yeah so we set ourselves up more as an environment we i think quite a few people set up very much like shops originally mm -hmm. we wanted to set up as a proper venue with air con uh seating tables all, all laid out as, as you would expect a, a venue to be um, yes, our food and drink. We have our own Luderati branded wine. Uh, food is is really the whole point of the emphasis is on board games and playing uh, in there. Food and drink also available, uh, and and that was the idea. And we also have a, a separate cafe part, the general area where people can come in and just have a coffee if they don't want to actually play the games. So we oh, separated cool. that area up for a reason. So we have a premium gaming area and a cafe area. And also have something called the cube, which is where we hold these escape drone typey thingies in, which is basically a, a slimmed down version of the traditional escape room uh, on a tabletop version. But it, it creates the same kind of, um, of uh, tension over an hour. Uh, and they're also mobile. We've been able to take these out on the road to oh, some wow. corners. So it, it, it was a slightly different design. Um, so it just adds to the, to the uh, options that people can come in and enjoy themselves and hopefully spend hours uh, as we get back to, to some more normal uh, mm -hmm. as they used to do before. Wow. So um, was it yourself who, who sat somewhere and went, this is, this is what I need to do. <laughs> I need to put myself through this because yes. we all know from speaking with, with other folks who set up their game stores and that kind of stuff. This is not like a, just a, a oh, we'll have a go. This, this is like heart and soul goes into these sort of venues. Yeah, no, we were fortunate because we have another company that we've been running for a long time, which is in management. Uh, mm -hmm. And we set up a side um, company to do board game publishing design, which we have done. And we've got quite a few coming up in the pipeline. But it was actually with, with producing, with looking at the board game publishing um, and looking at distribution that we started to look at actually why don't we tie this in together with a um, uh, with a, a cafe type model we spent a couple of years actually working through how to 
operate this because when we opened there wasn't that many around mm -hmm. um and so therefore we we had to plan it uh, considerably at the time and it took as you said it gestated a while and uh, and since then it's been a bit of a wild ride so uh, so yes in answer to your question <laughs> yeah wow i mean it, it it is one of those things where you you have this what if we oh and then suddenly you reach a point where you go oh we're doing it now yeah. Oh, this is. Where, did you have that moment, like thousands of gay, hundreds of games arriving in in a location, and you're like, no, I, this is this is really happening. We were a little bit fortunate because I'd actually um, we'd we'd actually been purchasing a number of games over time to build a library up with regards to our design because um, part of uh, every designer will tell you it's always very useful to be playing other people's games to work out how how games mm -hmm. operate as design. So we had a quite a library of games and wondered whether or not we could use them in a different way. Of therefore, it was a starter for ten for the library, but we 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 signed the lease uh, in January. Within seven weeks, we'd done a complete fit out. Wow! So uh, we were nobody said we could do it, but we did, and I think that kind of is the part of our philosophy that we, we do do things. Um, and yes, it was madness, sheer utter total madness, between signing the lease and actually getting it open in March. 19th of March is actually our anniversary date, as was. Oh, wow. um, so it was quite something to get that done. And it, we were looking, obviously, to expand the, the franchises out in future and have been doing for a little while. Uh, we think now is the time to start doing it. So we've got a good template for that. Wow. But that's complete madness uh, from start to finish. I'm not sure I can go through one of those again, which is probably <laughs> need possibly to do it. And I'll just uh, try and handle the training side. Because... Uh, People don't realize, I don't think, well, for those who have opened one, the complexity of, 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 of opening something like a board cafe, entertainment venue, is, is you know, there's a lot in it. And you mm -hmm. have to be right on the, on the button to get it done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you, you can lose a lot of money. So, uh, you know, it, it, is, it is a bit dangerous if you don't get it set up properly. Yeah, yeah. And it's so many so many bells and whistles that have to be spot on when you, when your yeah. first guests come through and everything isn't it yeah and that doesn't include the retail side <laughs> <laughs> no that's that's a whole other shebang yeah. whole other shebang um, so so we set we set up this this wonderful venue we've got all these different um, bits. So we've got a place where we can just chill or a place where you can come play games. We've got this escape room and, and staff on hand with, with Luderati Rhine. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, what are the, like, um, so I've got a, a, a note here, which is ask about digital membership. What's that oh, yes, all about? Okay. Yeah. okay, yeah, and I'll probably tie that with them games, with it? I mean, just to, just to come back to your point about people coming to the, to, we talk about the three spaces in Luderati. Mm -hmm. One is a safe space because we had people coming in from an inclusive angle. We, we're very inclusive, you know, there's, yeah. there's, we, we're not exclusive, we're very inclusive. And that's been born in the membership, we can see that. Um, the other thing is, is the third space, which is, uh, which is known in the industry, which is where people come because it's neither work nor home. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why people go there. And then we get the third space for us was called, or the, the other space we called that is the outer space, which yeah. has got nothing to do with being in outer space, but more about people being out of themselves, immersing in games and escape drums. So we talk about those three spaces. Uh, it, it's quite key for us to, to reinforce that. And that's why everybody's welcome. But uh, we'd originally started off, to come back to your point about membership, we'd originally started off with proper card loyalty membership, which we had. Um, but we'd been looking for some time at a digital version, mm -hmm. uh, which could be just be on people's phones. Yeah. And uh, we managed to launch that last year. Uh, and with digital membership, which we've now made free, we were originally looking to charge, but because of COVID, we've now said, no, people can join up digitally to us wherever you are in the world, if you can download it. It's on, it's on Apple or, or, or Google Play. Um, the digital membership, you just sign up. That then leads you to... Games Wizard and Games Wizard is a recommendation engine. We call it Netflix for games because people, I think, understand what Netflix yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, we spent three years basically since we, since uh, not long into the the cafe being open, we always felt it was a challenge for people to find the right game to play. Mm -hmm. A, they possibly didn't know about the game anyway, new games, and also checking to make sure that the games they were playing were the right games for them. So yeah. we've done a lot of rating of games and we don't use a, a like or dislike. We use a set, set of questions 
that basically is on the experience of the game. Mm -hmm. So you don't just rank a game, it's seven out of uh, yeah. uh, seven out of 10 or whatever. We ask questions about the type of game, why they like the game. And so by using some, a bit of algorithmic wizardry, we then come up with nearest neighbor type things. So we can okay. then look when people fill these games in, that up comes a set of games that they should look to play that they may or may not know about. And this is in an app form now. So it's, it, once you click into digital membership, it'll take you to the games as you can rate a few games and then out comes a number of, of recommended games. Plus we've now got various bands. So if you go to Netflix or Amazon Prime and you'll see the videos, you'll see that how they ban theirs into sci-fi, romantic drama. We have a similar kind of thing on the app. So uh, it's freely available. Um, and uh, it, we're designed, hopefully we can just, we've got over 1500 games in the database now. We've just got about another 90,000 to go, uh, but uh, that's so much is estimated. But the point is, is people can actually start to use this as a way to find the games they really should be playing. You know, because uh, personal recommendation or ratings can be quite biased in a way. So this takes the bias out and really focuses on the games that people should be playing. Because it's all about using time to play the right game not the wrong game. Yeah, I, I've just realized my next door neighbor has started drilling. <laughs> <laughs> so apologies for the for the extra noise that has just appeared. Fantastic timing. Perfect timing. With, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll do our best. I, it's I'll have okay. The, we I'll can have zone the mute. it out. Yeah, I'll have the mute button ready. Um, so this is in, in the Luderati loyalty, and we just need to get onto to iTunes, um, iTunes iStore. And... Yeah, if you, yes, you can. Well, no, actually, we have a separate app, uh, just to be confirmed. We have a separate Luderati app, which is the one that you can reserve bookings, go uh, reserve for Escape Drone. There's a Facebook page. It actually will take you to the UK Expo one in our Facebook. We actually built that in. Yeah, the Luderati app is available from I, uh, Google, uh, Google Store or, or iPhone. I store, Apple mm -hmm. store, App store. Um, that, Whatever that's it's called these days. Yeah. That is useful for you to be able to book. And that came out last year because we wanted people to reserve places that would save a bit of time. Oh, phone and email. Yeah. So that, that is an app separate to the Games Wizards, which is available via the digital membership. The best place to that is either to go to our website or our ludratistore.com, which has got the link there. So okay. you can get it in various places. So yes, just to be clear, we didn't bring one app out. We brought two last year. Um, but it was one was designed to help with the cafe in particular. Mm -hmm. The Games Wizard through the digital membership is about basically expanding outwards because we, we've we always had philosophy. The Luderati was always about trying to bring as many people into the board gaming sphere, not just for core gamers. We've never just been about core gamers. We've recognized that most people have got a latency for playing a board game mm -hmm. at some time in their life. And that has always been our philosophy. Yeah. So these things are just helping, just trying to help us to expand uh, our reach, basically. That's awesome, because because it's a big barrier, really, isn't it? And you, especially when you you're new to board gaming, maybe you wander into somewhere and you can see hundreds and thousands of games, and 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 it it, it can be a bit like jarring. Like, do I do I have to know? What if I yeah. ask for the wrong thing? What if, what if, yeah, I don't know this play, people, they might think, and it, and it's a big, kind, and so if you, you can at least explore it before via an app, or you can at least have, know where to start, perhaps, it kind of lowers that anxiety, lowers that worry about going in, and feels like you're part of the, the tribe as well, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, we had to laugh because we intentionally built what we call the wall at Luderati, mm -hmm. which is basically this huge wall of pretty much about just under a thousand games in it the idea was to make it look awesome and it does <laughs> the only downside is for people who knew it can be quite intimidating to see all of these games in alphabetical order yeah uh, going, wow where do i start and we have people who come in you know and still play monopoly and games like that and what we really want to try and do is get people to be to be really playing games you know that that are there that they should like you know both and cooperative versions now have made it much more amenable to uh, to broaden the audience um, and again it's it's which what of those games uh, you know which game should I be playing so we, we <clears throat> you know we're trying to make sure that people come in and are playing the right game because people have to invest time in learning the game as well as playing mm -hmm. and so if you're learning a game you don't like it's really you know it's like going to a film you don't like yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not really a good experience so we've always talked about the Luderati experience that is 
why we get visited by people from around the world or, or we're doing. Um, we talk about that a lot. So, you know, it is really important for us to, 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 to push that philosophy out. And the Games Wizard and the app are just ways in which we think it, it is good to do. And hopefully as more people use it, it's just not just about recommendation. It's also about the curiosity factor mm -hmm. and the fact that they're using something that is very much an analog industry, but they're using things that are very much technical, technically advanced. You know, an algorithm driven re recommendation engine is not something that people just come up with every day. No. So we think it's an ideal thing to use in the board games, given the choice of games, as you've already said, mm -hmm. there are, other, you know, there are a lot of games out there and it, it is a bewildering choice at times, even mm -hmm. for core gamers. Yeah. To yeah. find games that they know that they, they don't know that they could be playing so uh, that is the that is the uh, hope <laughs> so so you mentioned there's a couple of questions when you you get into it you answer you answer these and then it'll start recommending and then the, game. Yeah. yeah yeah and then the more it's, people that use it the better the recommendations will get yes that's the absolutely right because you can probably appreciate it's not just about rating a game but we have to find people who've rated the game similarly mm -hmm. to recommend another game so you need enough ratings to be able, we, we've got a core set, but obviously we're trying to grow this all the time because people do play an obscure game and you want to try and make sure that you can match up somewhere with the game that is coming out in the database. And the more we have in the database, the more games there are for people to choose over time. Uh, and that is the point, you know, so the more ratings, just, just as Netflix did, you know, and more and more people used to complete the data sets, mm -hmm. the more they were able to rate all kinds of things. And we expect to be doing the same kind of, thing in the board game era and over time i'm hoping that um, you know it makes the choice very easy for people it's not just about playing the game it's also purchasing the game yeah we found out at luterati that, that one of the main reasons people bought a game was still the picture on the front cover <laughs> now, uh, the problem for that is is that you may well take a game home and then find out it's not quite the game that you're expecting and games are not cheap anymore either. You know, a lot of these games now are retailing £30 plus upwards. Mm -hmm. So again, buying the right game or buying the right game for somebody is, is, is important uh, in that respect. So it's not just about playing the game. It's actually when it comes to purchasing as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, that, that's the other key thing about this. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean I'm guilty of like, that looks really cool. Let's dive yeah. in and then i think uh, a week or two ago we were talking um talking with some folks and, and they they were talking about like um chinatown and, and stuff that's got a naff cover yeah it's an awesome game right. yes you'd yeah. never you, you'd never kind yeah. of go oh let's uh, no yes. let's play what is it something bright and i don't have any yeah, bright, bright things yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so so just being able to to kind of get past that that kind of yeah barrier that that sort of no film poster syndrome i mean fortunately takanoko is a good game but the fact that pandas on the front always makes sure it sells so but you can't keep having pandas on every game cover and that's the problem so uh and it, it is it is worrying because we did see that so we're hoping that by using something like a recommendation engine it gets past the fact of the front cover being the be all and end all for purchasing uh, so that's the key thing I, and it's the same thing for me because I'm a war gamer by, but I used to buy board war games and I've been mm -hmm. since since the stone age <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and, and so for me that's always been a kind of collector rather than actually buying a game that I should have been buying so and given the, the as I said the choice of general games now is, is absolutely uh, astounding so it yeah. is quite important I think going forward yeah definitely for game designers as much as anybody else yeah definitely uh, like I love the story of Rainer Knizia inventing Quirkle yeah, I, I, folks who didn't know, Brian Quinitia, um, brilliant games designer, famously designs in his own bubble, doesn't yes. want external influence on his games, designed a game, playtesting it, and folks were like, Rainer, Rainer, this is a game that already exists. <laughs> so, so there's two sides of the coins here um, yeah. with, with that. But yeah, it's very important because I think not knowing all the the iterations on a on a mechanic like oh you know we know roll and move but what if yeah. it was this style of roll and move and yes. and how the innovations come about builds on your design as well so having something to recommend like try this oh okay yeah i get it yeah. is, is and key we still have a few assigned games from reiner because he came to came to the cafe when we first launched uh, oh so cool yeah, yeah yeah we got him in oh that's when he was still in in, in england i think he's gone gone back now to Germany, but he was in it. I, I may be wrong, but I, he came up, so we were fortunate to get him to the cafe, which was great. Um, 
but you're right with, with uh, the games. And the, the other thing about it as well, a lot of games sometimes will focus on mechanics. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a way, we wanted to focus on gameplay. Mm-hmm. So our focus is on gameplay rather than just mechanics because you can buy a game with a mechanic in, but the game might not still be what you want. So we, we changed our focus somewhat. Even though mechanics feature, it's the gameplay that we're really talking about, how the game plays mm-hmm. experientially. That's, That's the key good. thing for us. So it shifts a little bit of the focus away from just pure mechanics. Yeah. It's, it's, it, if you think of it, it's rather like, it's rather like um, describing a car, saying it's got this engine, it's got those tires, it has those seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's got five gears. Whereas actually what you want to know is, how does the car drive? Yeah. So for us, that is the, that is the analogy with the board game. It yeah. features this, it has this, it has this, but how does it play? Yeah. So that possibly is, you know, is one to, to get over what the games recommendation engine is about. Games engine. That's cool. I like it. I like it. So I'm getting the impression here that uh, somewhere in, in Luderati HQ, there must be a giant board of these are all the awesome things we could do. How do we do them quick? Let's learn yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Force you decamp to my house at the moment, which is which is effectively where it's at with flip charts and all sorts. But Yes, we've always got stuff on the go. And um, the question is just managing it. And it's been, I mean, COVID unfortunately really wasn't what we wanted last year with Mm -hmm. what we were doing. So it's been quite a challenge um, because obviously the staff can't rate the games in the way that we were doing before because we obviously can't meet up in the cafe. So things like that we've had to handle well. And um, as I said, it's been difficult, but there are stuff that we want to do, game designs, escape drone scenarios, uh, the latest ratings, how are we going to get to version two of Games Wizard? Yeah. Uh, do we need an upgrade of Ludorati app? Uh, and so on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so, yes. So, so do you have any, any projects on the horizon? Any, any other um, uh, th- things you're plotting and planning? Any spoilers? Any exciting things you can share with us? Secrets? Um, I, I think one thing to mention at the moment is something that we've not been able to get off the ground yet because of last year was the Ludorati Foundation which we set up uh, as um, an incorporated charity. So it's not a full oh, charity, wow. it's a corporate charity. Yeah, I, well, um, we, we don't take tips of the cafe. So we said to people, if they want to donate, then perhaps mm-hmm. the foundation away. Because we were doing some work with schools, hospitals, uh, and we were doing research with, well, we were looking to do research with the universities as well. And this all seemed to fit around basically a, a well-being stroke learning uh, focus, which is really what the foundation's about. But as I said, we've not been able to get it um, start. We haven't been able to really get it started because everything came to a crashing halt last yeah. year. But of course, it is set up for that because we were increasingly talking to different types of charities, mental well well-being charities. Uh, so it seemed to fit a particular space uh, going forward. So we're still hopeful we'll be able to start that, restart that this year. But that was something we we wanted to touch on because we seem to be increasingly getting getting in touch with people as i said on the school and educational side which is uh, the sorry school and the and the health side mm-hmm. so that is still very much in our uh, in our midst uh, to, to do so the so you the foundation and you're going to work alongside like there's zino up here in in the north there's like uh, there was a well i say wonderful it was shocking um headline that was like 65 million lonely people in, yeah. in the in the air and then you think about yeah. board games and and reaching out and how it might be just one night a week where you get to go to a board night board game night but that yeah. that, that one night can can give such a lift to your yes. your well-being because you have time with people and you don't have to worry about whether you know who was on eastenders or what the lo- the, the latest news is because you're going to play a game and you've got that nice common yes. ground that you can share with them so so anything to kind of lift that and then reach out to folks is is, is the good work we're hoping so yes i mean that, that's uh, as i said it's a separate side to the new party but it is an important one that we see going forward so uh, hence that that's the project and the, the other big thing at the moment is we've got quite a bit of design work going on we've done a project with nottingham castle Ooh. which has been shot for the last three years for a refurbishment uh, it is due to reopen in, in, in the next couple of months. We're hoping to do quite a bit with them over time as well, which relates to educational workshops mm-hmm. uh, and also some designs. And then we have our own other own designs, game designs, which we're hoping to bring out. One or two may well be exclusive just to Luderati. 
Wow, uh, that's uh, cool. It's the way we're thinking at the moment. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, we, we've got a whole game design side. Our, one of the main focus of the cafe when we started was to really be a design hub. So because if you think we've got all those games there for mm -hmm. research and we've got people who are coming in from all angles, you know, IT graphic designers, people just playing the game designers. So Ludorati for us was always about the game design side. So uh, again, taking a bit of a hit over the last 12 months, but uh, uh, we're looking uh, to expand that out from just ourselves to mm -hmm. involve more and more people locally and beyond. Wow, cool. So, so maybe thinking a little bit ahead because we all have to kind of keep in tow with, with restrictions and guidelines. Everything isn't set in stone. Um, you know, what we, what we maybe plan right now could change in two weeks. Um, but, but sort of thinking ahead, when, when Luderati gets to, to open the doors again, welcome everybody into the, into the space. And what kind of things happen? Do you have like, you know, you mentioned maybe do you have like, I don't know, Tuesday playtest and Wednesday RPG night and that kind of stuff. What, what's we this? Yeah, we, we did, we had at 1.7 social, uh, we had a pretty much social events going on every day of the week cool. uh, in the evenings. Uh, they were building up uh, for people obviously new to the location or, or on their own wanting to obviously play games. So yeah, we had that set up. We had a pretty much RPG um, uh, event every evening. Uh, oh, Rebecca cool. and David particularly were doing different RPGs each night. And then we had guest RPG ma games masters coming in as well. Um, so we'd, we were getting quite an extensive network, uh, which was obviously the big thing about the cafe, as well as people coming in just as gaming. So yeah, they are still very much, hopefully, on, on the agenda when we reopen. Um, you know, so that's a key thing for us. Again, the social side of thing, very important. Oh. So uh, yes. So you, uh, you do on. these kind of events and, and folks can find about them on, on like the Luderati website and the Facebook page and that Facebook kind of stuff? Facebook is as okay. our main, main act. We've always got a posting every day on Facebook. Uh, nice. And then we've got the RPG club as well. So when we've, we've started to take reservations already, which is nice to see nice. Uh, via the app. Or for, yeah, I, I, and it's good because it suggests to us that people want to come in. Mm -hmm. um, because, we, uh, you know, we go from from the, the, the individuals in the social meeting to obviously uh, people in pairs, all the way up to big groups, 15, 20. And then we've got the corporates as well, the, mm -hmm. the businesses that come in. We're hoping to see them uh, soon enough. Uh, obviously, we won't know until a few more months how much more the land lying back to normal. Yeah. We're just hoping it is and that people start to enjoy themselves again. We keep talking about it's all about the fun. Mm -hmm. That's all we keep saying. Uh, you know, so the last 12 months for me has been mentally... Um, exhausting so i swear a lot of people are the same and i you know it's about fun at the end of the day life's about fun mm -hmm. uh, Luther art is all about fun uh, mm -hmm. it's simple as that we have um in the chat a question about school sessions and and things like that what is the best way to find out information or check out with you um because um, you mentioned you do like corporate events do you also maybe do yeah. school events and things like yeah, that we've had, yes we've had a few uh, we had um, a, a couple of two or three school uh, events come in sometimes in quite small classes but we've had we did have quite of interest in fact actually we did have a, we have a robin hood pop-up museum which is actually board games of robin hood and sherwood forest nice. we were due to receive a french uh, and uh, german tour back here last year but they got cancelled mm -hmm. uh, because of covid yeah so, but we, we really want to open up the the school um side and that's the reasons we've we've linked in with nottingham castle project uh so people can basically go via the web's Facebook, or basically via reservations mm -hmm. at ludoratycafe.com uh, and, and just to ask us if they need to. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of email addresses around on the website, Ludorati Store, to get hold of us if you need any, any information. Uh, uh, and I, Damon is normally the one who will, uh, will, will tend to come back to people and, and, and you know, get something organised. So, excellent. yeah, we're open to all kinds of uh, requests, uh, every, every type of request. That's cool. Pretty much. A whole classroom of school kids being hysterically excited about <laughs> Sheriff and Nottingham board games. Yeah, it's good. I'd like to think so. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's really good because you were also mentioning with like the the foundation and things like that that get to get kids involved in in board games and board game design is it, it's a delight because um, um my local uni did did some similar stuff um and that was when we, when you get to see those events and you get to see the kids and they're like oh we don't just have to roll a dice and move a, a thing we can oh, we can use cards in this game yeah. and it's just then they go off and you've got dinosaur robot games that are 
bonkers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, and, and I've got used to Roblox at the moment with my two that uh, are on that most of the time. Uh, but it, it, it's because of that I get an insight as to, you know, how what they're doing on video game side. Uh, the other thing as well to mention, um, a lot of people don't realise, but we always see video games and board games as being two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. We don't see those being over there and we're over here. Increasingly, we see a lot more crossover, uh, and you can see that with the number of board games now coming out with a video game title. And I've just said that, you know, it's, it's to understand the complementarity of the two, not to treat them as being exclusive. So if we can get school kids and, and, and kids of that age involved still playing board games as much as they play video games, then it all goes well for us going forward. Because it seems to be that as people get a bit older, they migrate to board games anyway for the mm -hmm. social element. But it's nice to get school kids like I used to do playing games as I did, um, even though I said it a long time ago. Um, you know, because I still think that the board games offer something that video games don't in, in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. As video games offer things that some board games don't, there are two distinct things that I think people should realise. And for school kids, it's quite important to use the board games more in social settings uh, for, for many reasons, yeah. uh, you know, as much as it is a mental reason. One of the things I never forget when I was hearing about board games and, and computer games was um, a lot of games designers went back to playing modern board games because the systems in the board games are much more elegant than the 17 different bits of code you've got just to track the achievements. Yeah, yeah. so you can, you can go, oh, we're doing this code, this code, this, 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 but Scythe does it like that. So how do we replicate that much easier kind of thing? And yeah. And just learning different management tracks for board games. Yeah. To, I know it's like, I never realized that. Every time I learn about games design in some way, I'm like, oh, I didn't consider that. And it's yeah. just brilliant to, to kind of think yeah. on that. The philosophy we also have is open learning. It's always been um, a consideration. Uh, and we've got an online business school that we're just designing at the moment as well. Um, and, and it's, it's always been about open learning. So whether it's to do with, with team building for corporates, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's to do with design, uh, whether it's to do with, with video board game crossover, or whether it's just people learning to be more emotionally intelligent as the teenagers growing older, then all of those are really all pertinent points about board games. Um, and I sometimes think that might get a little bit lost in the message about board games, you know, when people are just about shifting boxes. We're all about making sure, as I said again, that, that people get the best experience of playing a board game and not being seen as an old fashioned thing. Mm -hmm. It isn't, you know, modern designs now and, 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 uh, and the engines of, of games are, are way, way advanced from, from the things I remember, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So it, it's really important for people to see that uh, yeah. as an alternative to doing video games all the time as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the idea. It's yeah. a mix, it's blended. I mean, the term is blended all the time now. Yeah. Blended learning, blended social, bl that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's, that's key. Nick, do you have time to stop and drink some of the Luderati wine and play some board games? <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chatting with you now, it, it's like you I feel like you, you probably are going to get off this, this call, head off to do seven other different things, invent something new, and then also come back to designing something. Like, like do you stop and just, just play the games? Um, very occasionally at the moment. I, I've got about, must be 50, 60 games in the other room that I need to go through. Um, and yes, I drink the Luderati wine when I'm in the cafe. Yeah. Um, so I haven't, haven't had it for a while. Uh, but yes, uh, it, it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a board gamer through and through. And uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that's always been quite passionate for me. Uh, but I have to temper that with knowing that people have got different different things they can do nowadays. So it's a mm -hmm. challenge to, you know, to make sure people can do this. So, uh, but for me, there's always something going on. Uh, and that's just the way it is. I'd love to spend all day playing board games if I could, but that's unfortunately not reality. <laughs> uh, it's a fantasy that I can't play. Was that uh, so, was that what Luderati was supposed to be? Nick's way to play games all day, and now it's yeah, just, just really it was. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I guess that's what it was because um, because having all the games there, the table space, seeing people coming in. I mean, it's you know we were playing. We we've been showing some of the videos that we used to take on Fridays and Saturdays, um, mm -hmm. just to, a bit of nostalgia for people to remember what it was like uh, over a year ago, just to see if can, people can spot themselves on there. But when you look at some of the videos and, and the vibe going on, it's just outstanding. It really mm -hmm. is. I mean, we, we, 
it almost brought you to tears sometimes just watching people enjoying themselves for hours and a whole space of people. And very much, I mean, you know what it's like at UK Games Expo. You yeah. know, it's, it, it, the, the vibe is just fabulous there when you watch people playing cumulatively. And that's what we've been creating at the Luderati, really. It's that kind of vibe. It, it just can't be beaten. It really can't. No, no. So, yeah, that's why I'm excited still. And that's why I've always got something else to be doing. Uh, it's just the downside, yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, give us a quick rundown on the best places that folks can find out about Luderati um, and start planning ahead for, for the new normal of the future. Yeah, uh, they can go to our main, site, main website, which is luderatecafe.com. Uh, we've also got a store, luderatestore.com, which will instantly link you to the digital membership if you need to. Um, uh, and and the, obviously we've got Luderati's Facebook, uh, which is the other main one where you can get up to date with anything we've, we're posting on there. Uh, as I said, the other things are download the Luderati app from Apple or Google Play. That links you to Facebook and news pages, not just us, includes mm -hmm. the likes of yourselves and, and tabletop gaming and a few others. Um, and uh, we're hoping to do live events as well, uh, something <gasps> else to mention. But that, that, that's, that's as and when. At the moment, uh, we were due to start those last year, but again, they had to be postponed. But that's, I'll leave that because you didn't ask me that question. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's just purely the, yeah, ludratycafe.com, ludratistore.com, Ludrati Facebook. Uh, that should be enough for people to find. Yeah, ticking tick a box for, for everybody there. That's awesome. Um, I, do, I do wish you all the best. I don't think you need it. It sounds like you've got everything planned and everything, everything. But you, it doesn't ha doesn't hurt in in retail no, and, and hospitality. Um, the, all the best luck when you you open up again um, in a, in a month or two. And um, I, I and uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing uh, seeing you at UK Expo because obviously, as you know, we have a stand there. Yeah, you're going to be at the Expo. Again. So um, oh. the game designs and the store and the game and the digital membership and Games Wizard. So yes, so we'll so, see you there. Yeah, if you don't get get to to uh, Luderati before, you can find them at Expo this year. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited now. I've just got to temper that with a month or so of sitting still. Ah, oh, um, thank you very much for chatting with me today. It has been been lovely to find out. I'm really interested. I'm going to go and look for the game wizard now and start. Yeah, okay. Start yeah. liking and sub, and and commenting uh, not commenting rating that's it answering the questions yeah. uh, um i need to take a short break because this Thanks, was guys. this was a very big cup of coffee um <laughs> and i shouldn't have drank that on air i should have <laughs> tempered at that um but i'll be back back um after after this we have another guest lined up and um we'll be having a chat with them um thank you again nick um see everybody soon <laughs>